Hello children, welcome to AIMS India Online Classes. This is Biology Session. You are watching Food Production from Plants, Part 4. So, we are discussing about the weed control. How to control the weeds? There are different methods of uh, weeding. The process of removing weeds from the field is called uh, weeding. So, weeding in the field uh, with uh, standing crop is uh, done by three methods. What are they? Mechanical method, chemical methods and uh, biological methods. Okay, mechanical method uh, we can use by hand picking or uh, by using hoi, okay, certain devices. Harrow is an instrument which is used to uh, measure. The harrow is used to remove the weeds. So, removing weeds uh, by using mechanical method is uh, uh, nowadays uh, somewhat uh, expensive. Okay, nowadays, uh, for every thing we are using uh, chemicals, okay, the chemical methods. The chemical methods are effective, but uh, they are not uh, environmental friendly. Okay, that is the reason. So, biological control methods are uh, very helpful in removing the weeds effectively. Okay. So, protection from the weeds, the manual removal, mechanical methods, which includes the physical removal of weeds by uprooting or cutting them close to the ground from time to time. So, this is done with the help of uh, an instrument called kurfi. And a seed drill is also used to uproot the weeds. Weeds are also controlled by using certain chemicals, that is chemical method. So, they are called weedicides. Weedicides are the chemicals. For example, 2,4-D. 2,4-D to remove the dicotyledonous weeds, this chemical is sprayed. So, these are sprayed in the fields to kill the weeds. They do not damage the crops. The weed, the weedicides are dilute with water to the extent required and sprayed in the field with a sprayer or in the form of powder. We can use a duster a instrument okay, to spread the weedicide in the field. Okay, this is the instrument uh, seed drill is also used to remove the weeds, okay, a seed drill. Uh, this is uh, spraying. Okay. The weeds are removed by pulling out by hand or by using a kurfa. Kurfa means a trowel, it is also called a, a hoy or a, a rake is used to remove the weeds in small fields. Okay. Hand pulling or by means of a kurpa or hoi is the appropriate method in the small fields. But in large fields, mechanical weeding is done by operating like uh, plowing, harrowing, uh, intercultivation, flooding or uh, burning. So, this method is, uh, is all these methods are time consuming methods, okay, which involves a uh, lot of labor lot of uh, labor and it is uh, expensive method. Okay, the chemical methods of uh, weeding is also done by spraying uh, special chemicals called herbicides or weedicides with the help of a sprayer. They destroy the weeds, but do not affect the main crop. Some common weedicides here 24D is given. Some more uh, examples uh, Dalapan, Metachlor, Seniazine, 2,4-D, okay, it is called 2,4-dichlorophenoxyacetic acid. This is the chemical, especially to remove the dicotyledonous weeds, it is used. And uh, MCPA, another example, MCPA means 2-methyl-4-chloro-1-phenoxyacetic acid and uh, butachlor. Butachlor is also another uh, chemical weedicide. So, however, the weedicides are poisonous and the grains must be properly washed before using uh, uh, for consumption, okay, before being consumed, they must be washed properly. 
since the weedicides are poisonous, uh, spraying may affect the health of farmer also. So, they should uh, be careful while using the weedicides. It is advised that the farmer should cover his body, okay, here uh, in the picture, okay, he is uh, not covered totally, only the face mask he wore, okay. So, it is advised that the farmer should cover his mouth and nose with cloth while uh, spraying, okay. So, the next method is uh, the biological method as already mentioned the weedicides are sprayed during the vegetative growth of weeds before flowering and uh, the seed formation spraying of weedicides may affect the health of the farmers. So, they should uh, use these chemicals very carefully they should cover their nose and mouth with a cloth while spraying okay. And the biological method if you take uh, the research for evolving the safer methods to kill the weeds is going on. For example, some insects that attract uh, that uh, attack only specific weeds have been used to control those weeds. However, it is uh, necessary to check the production of these insects. For example, cochineal insect in Tamil Nadu is used to eliminate uh, prickly pear that is opuntia from the crop field. The experiments have been conducted to attract uh, and trap the male population of the insects in order to check their reproduction. Okay. So, biological methods are very effective without causing any harm to the environment. They are environment friendly. Okay. Next uh, one is uh, the protection of the crop, uh, crop protection is very important. Crops can be protected from uh, stray animals like cows and buffaloes by raising a uh, wire fence all around the fields. The birds can be scared away from the field by placing a uh, scarecrows or by beating drums. See so much uh, uh, care to be taken at the time of uh, before harvesting. Okay? So, the pests are the organisms that attack and damage the crops. They must be, okay, it may be the rodents like rats or insects like locusts, weevils or termites. Rats eat the grains uh, produced and whether uh, whereas the insects damage uh, the standing crop as well as grains. Okay, the pests can be controlled by using pesticides which are poisonous chemicals. The pesticides uh, kill the pests as well as their eggs and larvae, but do not affect the plant. So, these uh, pesticides and insecticides include which are uh, used to kill the insects. Insecticides are used to kill the insects. Pesticides are used to kill the pests means larvae of insects. And rodenticides are the chemicals which are used to kill the rodents. Rodents means bandicoots, rats these. So, insecticides are sprayed by hand operated machines or by low flying aircraft in the fields. Nowadays, drones are used. Okay. They must be sprayed at uh, appropriate times in the correct uh, dosage. Otherwise, what happen? Pests might uh, become resistant to them. So, some common insecticides are uh, BHC or Gamaxin. Okay, the commonly known as uh, Gamaxin. So, now it is banned I think so. Melathion and uh, Dysistone, these are uh, another effective insecticides. The plants are also damaged by the disease causing fungi, bacteria or viruses. So, these uh, diseases transmitting through the seeds, air, soil or through insects. Some common plant diseases uh, uh, you we noticed uh, they are uh, the caused by the fungi such as rust and smut, the fungal disease of crops, blight of potato is also a fungal disease, wilt is a disease caused by the bacterium. In this disease, uh, the xylem vessel of the plant get uh, blocked and the plant wilts and dies as water cannot be conducted up. So, spraying of chemicals of various kinds. Uh, 
gives protection to the crops against uh, these diseases. For example, a crop of pest called uh, uh, fungicides are used to destroy the fungi. Pesticides must be used uh, with uh, caution, otherwise what happens? They can cause damage. So these uh, kill useful insects also as well as um, okay, such as honeybees, uh, butterflies, useful insects are killed. So in humans, uh, these uh, insecticides, pesticides, uh, these may can cause irritation of the skin and uh, some uh, bronchitis with respiratory problems. The worst thing is that uh, these get mixed with mixed up with the soil and the water and are absorbed by the plants and uh, these then enter into our body whenever we consume fruits and vegetables. So that's why so before eating we must clean the vegetables and fruits thoroughly. Fruits and vegetables brought from the market often having a coating of pesticides on them. They must be washed off carefully before eating as these are very harmful for our health. Okay. Now come to harvesting, threshing and winnowing. What is harvesting? Harvesting of crop. Harvesting of crop means it is an important task actually. The cutting of crop after it is mature is called harvesting. Okay? Once the crop matures, it is harvested, cut and gathered, isn't it? In harvesting, the crops are pulled out or cut close to the ground. It usually takes uh, three to four months uh, for a soil crop to mature, isn't it? So this may be done manually by using a sickle or by using a machine called a harvester. Nowadays, we are using mechanization of agriculture. We are using uh, machines. The harvesting in our country is either done manually by sickle or by a machine called harvester. In the harvested crop, the grain seeds need to be separated from the chaff. This is called as threshing. So this is carried out with the help of a machine called combine. Combine machine uh, is uh, in fact a combined uh, harvester and thresher. Two things, two works done at a time. Harvesting and uh, threshing. Okay, this is a traditional method. Sekil is used. So this is a combine. Several uh, hundreds of acres of land can be harvested at a time by using this machine. Combine. Okay. So threshing can be done manually by making uh, oxen or bulls uh, trample over the cut crop, or it can be done by a machine called thresher. So a farm machine called combine is used for both harvesting and uh, threshing. So after threshing, the grain has to be separated from the chaff. The chaff includes dust, husk, etc. This can be done manually with the help of uh, wind and it is called as winnowing. Okay? So harvesting followed by threshing followed by winnowing. The farmers with the small holdings of land do the separation of grain and chaff by winnowing. Okay? So in this process of winnowing, what they will do? The mixture is uh, dropped on the ground from a height. The heavier seeds fall almost vertically down, whereas the lighter chaff gets blown away by the wind and falls at a distance. So winnowing can also be done by winnowing machine also. So after harvesting the crop, often stubs are left in the field, which are then burnt by the farmer. Okay. So actually, this causes uh, some atmospheric pollution. So therefore, farmers are advised not to burn the stubs in the field. Instead, these stubs can be ploughed back into the soil to serve as manure. Okay. So you know several festivals. Pongal, Holi, Diwali, and uh, Baisakhi, and Bihu. These are all the festivals related to harvesting, harvest festival. Isn't it, children? So, harvesting of crops celebrated 
during these festivals. What are they? Pongal, Holi, Diwali, Baisakhi and Bihu. These are all uh, the harvest festivals of India celebrated the time of harvesting of crops. At this time, what farmers, uh, farmers uh, get the fruits of their hard labor of the past few months, men and women celebrate these festivals with great enthusiasm. Okay, now crop storage. Storage of produce uh, is uh, an important task. It is an important task. If the crop grains are uh, to be kept for a long time, they should be safe from moisture, insects, rats and microorganisms. The fresh crop has more moisture. If the freshly harvested grains or seeds are stored without drying, what happen? They may get spoilt or attacked by organisms like bacteria, fungi. Okay, it will, uh, they lose their uh, germination capacity. So, hence before storing them, the grains are properly dried in the sun to reduce the moisture in them. This prevents the attack of insect pests, bacteria and fungi in the farmer's storehouse. Okay, you can see the storehouse here. So, this is the winnowing machine okay, which remove the chaff from the grains. Husk and chaff is removed by this winnowing machine. So, storage of grains, the granaries are the places where these grains are stored in the gunny bags okay, in the off season. Next, the grains in the jute bags are metallic bins. However, the large scale storage of grains is done in the silos and granaries to protect them from pests like rats and insects. Dried neem leaves are used for uh, storing uh, food grains at uh, home. For storing uh, large quantities of grain in uh, big uh, godowns, the specific chemical treatments are required to protect them from pests and uh, microorganisms. Okay? Silos and granaries are the very large storage devices. Gunny bags or jute bags. They are filled with food grains and uh, are stacked in large godowns on wooden platforms. They are stored about 10 to 15 centimeter above the ground and uh, about 70 centimeter away from the wall. The go-downs are made free of microbes, insects and rodents by spraying pesticides. Okay? Silos and granaries, they are tall cylindrical containers for bulk storage. See silos are the storage of grains. Okay? Bulk storage devices they are. These are used especially by the government uh, agencies like uh, Food Corporation of India, FCI. Okay, the grain uh, silos uh, facilitate easy inspection, fumigation, protection from pests and temperature control. The granaries are uh, large buildings where grains are stored inside the gunny bags. Okay? The next. Okay, so, actually the control of pests in the storage, stored grains is also very, very important. So, for this method, fumigation with chemicals, fumigants they are called, which are volatile gaseous uh, chemicals that uh, get quickly vaporized and uh, resultant fumes kill the insects without affecting the grains. So, which kill or uh, repel pests without affecting the stored grains. Neem leaves are kept along the grains to repel pests. Small quantity of vegetable or mineral oil is added to the grains or legumes to prevent the pests from laying eggs and to check larval development. The storage area can be sprayed regularly after every three weeks to kill pests. For storing grains at home, powdered neem leaves and black pepper are mixed to check insects, eggs and larvae. Okay, since the grains are harvested once in a year, need to be stored safely so that uh, they last till at least uh, the next harvest season. In practice, however, an extra stock called buffer stock is always maintained so that 
the grains are available in plenty even if there is a, a shortfall in production in a particular year. So, due to monsoon failure or other reasons. Okay? So, green revolution, the great improvement in the production of the food grains and other agricultural produce during the period 1960 to 1980, it is described as green revolution in Indian agriculture. It is known as golden era of Indian agriculture. The green revolution became possible by the collective efforts of government agencies, scientists and uh, farmers. The food production was enhanced to such an extent that our country became self-sufficient in food production. The great success of green revolution in India can be attributed to the efforts of Professor M. S. Swaminathan. He introduced high yielding varieties of seeds of foreign origin in Indian agriculture, developed new varieties of all Indian crops and evolved new methods and techniques of raising agriculture production. Undesirable effects of green revolution, what are the undesirable? Okay. Excessive use of chemical fertilizers in order to obtain uh, more yield has changed the chemistry of soil is in uh, due course of time and has reduced the soil fertility. So, it is not desirable. And another undesirable, the unjudicious uses of fertilizers, weedicides and pesticides has polluted the soil and water bodies. This water has now become unsuitable for drinking also. And uh, another undesirable effect of uh, green revolution, high yielding crops need uh, more water. Therefore, underground water has been used for irrigation on a large scale. So, this has uh, resulted in the depletion of ground water. Even underground water resources have also got polluted due to the leaching of fertilizers. Okay? Now, so it is very important uh, though we increase the food production. So, it must uh, the fall, we must follow the appropriate methods. Okay? The methods must be environment friendly. So, let us proceed food from animals. So, after completing uh, this table, the table is given beside, uh, you must have seen that uh, like plants, animals also provide us with the different kinds of food. Many people living in the coastal areas consume fish as a major part of their diet. In the previous classes, you have learnt about the food that we obtain from plants. We have just seen that the process of crop production involves a number of steps like selection of seeds, sowing. Similarly, the animals uh, reared at home or in farms have to be provided with uh, proper food, shelter and care. When this is done on a large scale, then it is called as a animal husbandry. Okay? You can see the table uh, here. Make the following table in your notes book, in your notebook and complete it. So, type of food, milk, cow, buffalo, she goat, she camel. The next uh, meat, okay, here. Uh, you can see the male animals of the above, okay, goat, uh, sheep uh, and poultry. Next, uh, eggs you can get from chicken, okay, that is uh, from uh, the poultry product it is also from layers, okay, hen, ducks, geese, etc. You get the eggs, okay, honey. This is the product which we get uh, obtained from the honeybees, okay, from the honeycomb. Like that, the different products we obtain from the animals also. Okay. Milk and milk products we can consider. Means milk, uh, curd, uh, cheese, uh, butter, ghee, these are all. Okay. Okay, children. So apiculture, sericulture culture, fishes, meat we will get. Okay? So, these are all the techniques we use in animal husbandry. Okay, please read the textbook. Thank you for watching our video.
please subscribe our channel and press the bell icon for receiving latest updates.